Hey everyone, it's Kevin. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to tell you 10 beliefs all disordered eaters have. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button and don't forget to check out some of my free resources below. And don't forget to check out my signature program, The Empowered Eating System. You can enroll today. Beliefs drive behavior. That is a core principle of my philosophy. If you have a belief, that is what you act out. If you want to know what somebody believes, watch how they behave. We say what we think, we do what we believe. That's a really important concept to understand. So when you are trying to recover from an eating disorder or some disordered eating or just some bad eating habits, understand there is a belief that is driving that behavior and you need to figure out what that belief is and then replace it with something else. When I look at disordered eaters and people with EDs, they always have one of these beliefs. Not everybody's gonna have all 10 of these beliefs, but they're gonna have at least one and probably multiple. So in this video, I'm gonna tell you what those are. These beliefs are destructive. They lead to destructive behavior. They are not healthy beliefs. And the sooner you figure out what these beliefs are and you eliminate them, the better. The first belief is I'll start tomorrow. Yes, tomorrow-itis, or what I call the tyranny of tomorrow. You're always waiting for something different in your life. You're always waiting for a new environment, sunny weather, different job, different place to live, whatever. You just keep waiting and waiting and waiting, and the next thing you know, you've wasted months, years, maybe even a whole decade of your life. Waiting for those perfect conditions is only going to make you miserable. It's going to make change harder, and it's going to make it less likely that you will ever change. Don't rely on external circumstances to change when you are perfectly capable of making the changes yourself. Waiting for change is comfortable because it means you don't have to do the hard work today. You can keep saying yes when you really should say no. You don't have to take those necessary steps. You don't have to go outside of your comfort zone. You can say that's in the future. You're making your life easy today, but you're making it a lot harder in the future and much less fulfilling. My advice is to do one thing today and get that ball rolling. The second belief is my brain is broken and I'm beyond repair. It's easy to believe that your appetite mechanism is broken, that you need brain surgery, that your brain is completely screwed up in some way. Well, none of that is true. Your brain is working just fine. You have all of the intelligence that you need. You have a great brain. In fact, if you're watching this and you have enough intelligence to seek out this information, you probably have a good brain. Blaming your brain is only a cop-out. The thing is, you don't need a new brain. You don't even need to rewire it. All you need to do is look for those thoughts and start changing those habits. Other than statistic criminals, nobody is beyond repair. You're not beyond repair. It might seem that way, but you're not. You are capable of making the changes that you want. I'm not trying to turn this into a motivational speech, but it's true. If there's a bad habit and you want to eliminate it, if you really want to do it, you can do it. But maybe that's the problem. Maybe it's not worth changing right now. And be honest with yourself. If you have these habits, and these habits are ruining your life, or at least causing damage, or making you less healthy, that might not be enough to make the change. Maybe you're willing to exchange all that for the temporary comfort and escape that it provides. It's up to you. There's no right, there's no wrong. It's your life. The third belief is, I've always been this way, so there's no chance of recovery. It doesn't matter how long you've been this way. It doesn't matter if you've been this way since a child. It's never too late to make changes. If you have a good enough reason to change, you'll do it. We make changes when we're in pain or when we're chasing a really big reward. That's how our brains work. We're always avoiding pain and chasing rewards. This is where you need to be really honest with yourself. What is it that you want? And maybe right now what you want is that escape and you're willing to trade a lot of other things, your looks, your sanity, your fitness, whatever, for that little escape that you get. It is comforting and I totally get it. The binge purge restrict cycle, it gives you meaning. It gives you something to look forward to. It gives you some enemy, some challenge. And without it, what would you do? What would you do at the end of the day if you couldn't have a giant serving of ice cream and hot fudge? There's a lot of other things you could do, but maybe right now you're thinking that's your best option. I'm gonna include this as a bonus. Another mistaken belief that disordered eaters have is they think that they have to do this. They think they need this to cope. They think they need this to cope with life. If they don't have this, what else are they gonna do? I always had this fear that once I overcame it, I wouldn't have any pleasure in life, that there would be nothing to do, that I would just have to deal with long periods of boredom, that my life would suck. I had all of these negative beliefs. I thought I had to have it. 
And that's a really bad belief to have because if you think you need it, if you think you have to have it, it's gonna be really hard to change. Another mistaken belief is my metabolism is broken. No, it's not. Metabolism really comes down to a lot of factors. Your age, your muscle mass, how much you're moving each day, and to a certain extent, hormones. Like certain hormones like your thyroid can affect your metabolic rate, in fact, a great deal. So if that's a problem, you should consult the physician. I don't know a lot about hypothyroidism. I don't know how to correct that. There's probably a bunch of other videos on YouTube, so maybe you should go check those out. What I'm saying is, just because you have a sluggish metabolism doesn't mean that you are destined to have these kind of habits. It doesn't mean you have to behave this way. Just like saying my brain is broken, this is just another cop out. If you have a problem with your thyroid, it's correctable. There are a lot of resources out there. There are physicians who deal with nothing but bad thyroid, so go find one of them. As I've said in previous videos, a lot of these habits and problems, they're not necessarily your fault, but it is your responsibility to correct them. When your car breaks down, maybe it wasn't your fault. I mean, things break after a while, but it's your responsibility to find somebody who can fix it. If you have a problem, get it done. This channel would not be possible without Esatino Artists. If you want to start your own YouTube channel and start producing your content, then check out the Creative Business Academy. There is a link below. All right, back to the video. The next one has to do with recovery. If I recover, then I'll gain weight. And this is a big fear of people who have EDs because they don't want to gain weight. They're weight conscious. And that's good and bad. I'll talk about that later. But they're so afraid if they stop counting everything, if they stop weighing everything, if they stop obsessing about it, then they're just going to gain all this weight because their brains are broken, right? Their appetite mechanism isn't working anymore. That's what I used to think, that I had to repeat these behaviors and patterns over and over or else I would lose control and I would just gain all this weight. And if I gained it once, I would never be able to lose it again. It's this catastrophic thinking that I see a lot among disordered eaters. And I was guilty too. If this happens, then this will happen, then this will happen, then this will happen, and then my whole life will end. If that's your kind of thinking, then that's definitely one area you should focus on. I don't wanna to spend too much time talking about recovery because that's not the point of it, but recovery is definitely worth it. Even if you gain a few pounds, and really, you're not gonna gain much more than that if you gain any at all, it's totally worth it. Losing those extra five or 10 pounds, sometimes it's not worth it. A closely related belief is, if I don't restrict, then I'll overeat. And maybe at first this is true. If you don't have this really regimented diet, you might overeat at first because you've never allowed yourself to do that. And then when you stop obsessing and you stop following this really regimented diet and you give yourself a little more latitude in how you eat, then yeah, you might notice that you're eating a little more and the scale is going up, although not necessarily. A closely related belief to this is I don't trust myself. And I think a lot of people with DDs don't trust themselves. They don't trust themselves to eat right. That's why they always have to look at menus and the label on the side of a box and they have to weigh everything and they have to track everything because really they don't have any intuition. They don't have any guiding principles. So they have to look at numbers and they have to calculate everything. The belief I don't trust myself is closely related to the belief that if I don't restrict, then I'll gain weight. Or if I recover, then I'll gain weight. It's all kind of related. Do you trust yourself with other things? Do you trust yourself to do anything correctly? My guess is yes, that you have some element of trust, but you lost your trust in your ability to feed yourself properly and maintain a consistent weight. The next thing is I'm addicted to food. Don't get me started on addictions. You're not addicted to anything. As I've pointed out in other videos, I don't believe addiction is a real thing. I don't believe anybody is beyond control. I don't believe anybody consumes something without their permission. My point is whenever you decide to put something into your body, you do it voluntarily. You put it in your body because you feel like you need to have it in order to cope, which is another faulty belief. Nobody or nothing is making you consume all this fat and sugar. You're doing it because you conclude that it's the best choice you have in the moment. So get rid of this idea of addiction. You're not addicted to anything. You do it because it provides a temporary escape and it provides temporary entertainment. And you're willing to go to great lengths to get that escape. Next belief is recovery is really hard. This is another belief that I think holds people back is if I recover, then it's gonna be this long slog. 
And sometimes it can feel that way, but not really. Remember, if you have a good reason to recover, then it doesn't feel like that much work. That's why having good reasons to change is so important. Because when you when you want something else in life and you have other hobbies and you have a social network and you have something else to look forward to and you have other, force, other sources of stimuli and entertainment, you don't necessarily want it anymore. It's not something that happens overnight like that. You can't just say, okay, I don't want this anymore. It's not like that, not that fast, but it, it's not going to take you four or five years to overcome this. You don't have to restrict yourself. You don't have to starve yourself. You don't have to go on this medically supervised diet. You don't have to deny yourself everything. You don't have to have three bowls of oats every day and nothing else. You don't have to be on this really regimented restricted diet. I think that was one of my fears is, well, then I'm just going to have nothing because I had this all or nothing mentality. If I wasn't binging and purging, if I wasn't chewing and spitting, then I was starving. I didn't have this happy medium. I didn't understand that. I was so binary. My thinking was binary. I'm either in this horrific cycle or I'm starving and I'm anorexic. And this leads me to my final belief. I promise you have to have the perfect diet. No, you don't. There's no such thing as a perfect diet. I don't know what that looks like. I mean, I have some idea what that would look like, but the perfect diet is one that feeds you today and sustains you in the future. So let's just look at somebody who's eating fast food all the time. Yeah, it feeds them today, but it's not sustaining them into the future. They're gonna have high cholesterol and diabetes. They're gonna have kidney failure and heart problems. That's not sustaining themselves. You wanna feed yourself today, but you also wanna have vitality in the future. If you eat too little, you're not feeding yourself today and you're probably not going to have vitality in the future. In fact, I know you won't. What you want is a diet that provides both. That to me is a perfect diet. And that perfect diet isn't going to be true for everybody. But you don't have to dial in your macros. You don't have to have the perfect number of calories. You don't have to have this diet or that diet. I mean, if you want to do Atkins, great, go do Atkins. You want to do vegan, fine, go do vegan. It makes no difference to me. What matters is does this diet provide what you need in the long term? Those are the beliefs that I find the most often among disordered eaters. What are some other beliefs? Let me know in the comments below. Hope you found this video educational and entertaining. Don't forget to subscribe and check out my free resources below. If you liked this video, I'm sure you like one of the other videos that you see on the screen. Click one of them and I'll see you there.